Hello everyone, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Uh, watch the video till the end and also if you are new to this channel then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon. Friends, I welcome you to the tutorial on what exactly is amalgamation. So, let's begin. See, before getting insight on what amalgamation is, let us understand it in a layman's language. See, amalgamation is nothing but a kind of a marriage. Okay, <laughs> just like a marriage, a two individuals come together to form a union. In this, two or more entities come together for carrying out their business activities. So they are done with a view to get an advantage in a form of tax benefit, or let's say economies of scale, increase in capital, or elimination of competition, etc. So it is always said that two are better than one. United anyone can stay can stand actually stronger. Hence, the amalgamation is of a significance to the entities involved in the same. This tutorial on amalgamation discusses a couple of things. We are going to take a couple of examples too. So, let's start with the first thing. What exactly is amalgamation? So, to start with the basics, the most commonly adopted definition of amalgamation is amalgamation is a combination of two or more companies into a, into a new entity. Company A and company B combine together to form a new company that is entity called C. Second, amalgamation also includes absorption. So what is absorption? See, absorption is basically means that the company A takes over company B and the B is wound up. I'll show you a chart on the same so that you will be able to get a clear idea on the same. As you can see over here, A plus B, it makes it to C. So amalgamation is a combination of two or more companies into a new entity. So A and B are combining to form a new company called C. An absorption is basically A is acquiring B. So existing company A is taking over B. So B is completely wound up. The two most commonly used terms in amalgamation while referring to the companies are transferor company and transferee company. So just in case you are confused over here the transferor is B. B is the transferor and A is the transferee. Okay. So the transferor is the amalgamating company and the transferee is the amalgamated company. Now let's discuss the type of amalgamation. First, the first one is uh, amalgamation in the nature of merger. So I'm writing one over here, amalgamation in the nature of merger. Now, this is said to be the nature of the merger on the satisfaction of five conditions. First, all the assets and liabilities of the transferor company becomes after the amalgamation, the assets and liabilities of the transferee company. Second, the shareholders holding not less than 90% of the face value of the equity shares of the transferor company, other than the equity shares already held therein, immediately before the amalgamation by the transferee company or its subsidiaries or their nominees become equity shareholders of the transferee company by the virtue of amalgamation. Third, the consideration for the amalgamation receivable by those equity shareholders of the transferor company who agrees to become equity shareholders of the transferee company it is discharged by the transferee company wholly by the issue of the equity shares in transferee company except that the cash may be paid in respect of the fractional shares fourth the business of the transferor company is intended to be carried out on after the amalgamation by the transferee company and last no adjustment is intended to be made to the book values of the assets and libraries of the transferor company and when they are incorporated in the financial statement of the transferee company except to ensure uniformity of the accounting policies. The second method is called the amalgamation in the nature of purchase. The first one was merger with five conditions. The second that we are studying is amalgamation in the nature of purchase. If any of the above condition is not met then it is said to be in the nature of the purchase. So now let's see the method of accounting. The method of accounting is there are two accounting methods. The amalgamation that is first amalgamation in the nature of merger is accounted on the basis of pooling of interest method. So it is accounted based on pooling of interest method and the amalgamation in the nature of purchase is accounted on the basis of purchase method. Got it? Now what is the need for amalgamation? See. As mentioned in the first lines. Now let's consider the need for amalgamation. See, as mentioned in the previous conversation on this particular topic, 
of what you tell, there are various motives behind amalgamation. Briefly, first, it helps in availment of various tax benefits. Many a times amalgamation takes place as a measure of the tax planning. Second, by untying through ways of amalgamation, company takes advantage of large economies of scale. Third, it also helps in elimination of the competition amongst the similar group of industries. Sometimes it also helps in creation of monopoly in the market. Fourth, it is always used as the icon of the growth. It generally increases the value of the companies. Fifth, it carries future prospects of the financial and capital growth and development. Sixth, it provides synergy benefits, quite a popular word related with amalgamation. In simple term, it means the benefit that is derived due to the combination. So, what is the process of amalgamation? The following procedures are adopted for amalgamation. Legal procedure. That is the first one. During the entire process of the amalgamation, one has to take care of the various set of laws, rules, regulations, legislations, etc. The applicability of the different laws changes from case to case. Every amalgamation has to be considered separately for determining the ambit of the capital uh, applicable laws. Also, it varies from country to country. Like, I'll give you an example in that. In India, the company law, the SEBI law, the RBI rules and regulations, FEMA, income tax, so on and so forth, has to be followed. I mean, this laws provide a legal framework to all the activities carried out under the scheme of amalgamation. See, drafting of the scheme of amalgamation, conducting board meetings, getting board's approval, consent of shareholders, filing various forms of with ROC, informing the stockholders or stock exchanges, advertisements in the newspapers, etc. are few of the legal steps involved in the amalgamation. Everything needs to be done within the legal horizons of respective countries. Now, let's see what are some other procedures. See, there are various other procedures involved in the process of amalgamation. Now, I'll, I'll enumerate a few of them. The first, due diligence is conducted for the corporate restructuring reforms like amalgamation which gives a fair idea about the deals are viable or not. So, it considers various aspects and so there exist different kind of due diligence such as financial due diligence, legal due diligence, operational due diligence, etc. Second, valuation is done for the business which are getting amalgamated. Basically, pre-amalgamation, valuation and post-amalgamation valuation is done and compared to know the value or worth of the amalgamation. Now, valuation is altogether a very broad area which is subjective exercise based on upon numerous facts and assumptions. Next comes the deal which is presented by one to the others which whom it intended to get amalgamated. The structuring of the deal is tedious task. Many negotiations takes place in the process of amalgamation. Negotiations is also a very important skill as it is very much required to come upon a successful conclusion and finalization of a deal. Now, the cost of the amalgamations are very high. So, one needs to conduct a cost benefit analysis before entering into any amalgamation. The sharing or bearing of such costs has to be decided in advance. Finally, a legal agreement is signed between the parties for amalgamation. The real test starts after the commencement of the amalgamation. So, the successful deal should not confine itself to only payments. But the post-amalgamation operation should work as well for the results the companies were expecting from such amalgamation. Now, I want you to ponder upon some of the problems of amalgamation. So, I'll get you to that point. Though, changes is the law of the nature. So first, I mean, we all would agree with the point that changes are difficult and not easily welcomed by us. Same goes for the mergers. Second, there are cultural differences, especially in, in, in case of cross-border mergers. People don't work in harmony. I mean, there are signs of discontentment. Third, it is not possible every time that one gets to a win-win situation out of amalgamation. One has to ever be ready for facing trials and tribulations. Fourth, the attitude of the management is not always friendly. The hostile kind of attitude of the management is a sign of a danger for any amalgamation. I'll tell you some of the terminologies which are used in mergers and amalgamation. The first one is known as bootstrapping earning. If you have ever heard about bootstrapping earnings. Okay, I'll get you there. See, bootstrapping earnings is the increase in the earning per share as a result of the merger combined with the market use of the pre-merger P-E ratio to the value of the post-merger earning per ratio. The second is called the godfather godfather offer now 
that means a godfather offer is a very lucrative offer which nobody can refuse the third is called killer bees that's called killer bees this is only one remedy in the last resort the killer bees are the legal firms the public relation firms and the investment bankers who help to deal with the forced unfriendly hostile takeovers now the next one is called radar alert okay see radar alert is a very is, is in, in simple term is the watchman of the company it keeps a watch on the market of the for the continuous updates on the trading and the prices of the stock if any suspicious transactions like over purchase of the company shares takes place it immediately takes actions against the same as this may be a sign of a silent takeover or, or acquisitions the next is called horizontal merger if anyone have ever heard about what is horizontal merger that would be really good uh see mergers between companies who have similar line of business is called horizontal merger and there's called another call vertical merger see merger between the companies who have common line of production but different stages of production that's called vertical merger another is called conglomerate merger see mergers between completely unrelated companies have different line of business having understood this concept now let's have a look on some significant amalgamation in the recent past which will provide us a very glimpse on the real happening in the world now i'll show you some of the real examples on amalgamation in recent time the first one is hains and craft foods see most interesting merger to study for many of us is hains and craft food wondering why because we love food don't we apart from this following us some of the north what the points you know that th this merger has in it see this merger was important for the reason that it involved combination of two giants in the food industry the merger helped in augmentation of annual sales and establishing the major market share in the world more specifically in the united states the synergy benefits were expected out of the merger in the form of international growth and economies of scale the cost savings were expected as a result of the combined operations different strategies were adopted to cut the cost so the cost of the merger was approximately if i remember was close enough to 42 billion dollars the merger was known as the horizontal merger the next example that i want to take is of have you heard about toyota the next merger was a toyota merger the toyota merger a peculiar kind of a merger the un unique i mean kind of a f feature observed in the in their mergers is that they believe in expansion through the internal means see merger took place took place between two subsidiaries of the same parent company over here and the motive behind this kind of mergers is improvement of the internal processes utilizing the strength of each other and strengthening the communication the next everyone should know about this ebay and paypal everyone must be fascinated by paypal paypal if you know about elon musk right so the reason behind ebay and paypal merger was dependency on each other see the paypal was dependent on ebay for majority of its income the payment businesses are dependent on the volume of the transaction the paypal was dependent on ebay for its volume so this merger could not continue for a long again ebay and paypal parted their ways approximately after 12 years of its unity the cost of the merger was approximately around 1.5 billion dollar and the paypal was i think owned by if i am not wrong uh, elon musk who is a revolutionary person now the next is dow chemical and dew point See this merger took place because the investors wanted to have a better diversified portfolio for their investment. The dew point was into the seeds industry and Dow was also into the chemical industry. A merger of this rare industry was strategically planned to achieve the best position in the field of agriculture. The cost of the merger was approximately around 130 billion dollars. The merger is a kind of a vertical merger. The next example that I want to take is Citcorp and Travelers Group. This merger was meant to create one of the biggest merger in the sector of the financial service of banking insurance and investment operation. See this was done to bring various clients together who makes use of the financial services and who are keen to invest in the markets. The move would increase their clients base on the individual levels. Through this measures the investment products were made available to all kinds of customers. The cost of merger was approximately close enough to 140 billion dollars. So we'll make a final conclusion after going through all the examples and the concepts in a nutshell we can arrive at a conclusion that mergers are dependent on various factors there is a reason behind every merger the activity the merger is long exercise wherein multiple course of action have to be conducted to arrive at a decision whether the merger will be fruitful or not a little mistake costs heavily both to the transfer as well as the transferee company it is also bitter truth that all the mergers don't pour to the successful 
just like some marriages head towards divorce mergers can also sometimes leads to separation <laughs> there is no happily ever after at every time so not every merger or takeover is supported by the shareholders and management when they are not convinced about the idea of merger they feel insecure against the proposal of amalgamation so to depict that disapproval they take help of various takeover defense mechanisms such as poison poison pills golden parachute pacman defense white knight defense white square defense crown gels green mail and so on and so forth these strategies are equally interesting as the names the work doesn't ends when the two companies gets amalgamated but a new journey starts from the very point to make this sure a shot of success efforts have to be made at the post amalgamation stage the amalgamation should bring about the optimum utilization of resources the companies have to continuously strive for continuous growth and development so that's it uh, for this particular topic if you have learned and enjoyed watching this video please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates thank you everyone cheers